art can change our future. Travel with me, artist John Dyer and artist Joanne Short. Be inspired by endangered environments, plants and animals, and learn about tribal culture. Paint, connect, exhibit and change. It's a last chance to paint. Hi, today is day five of Precious Africa and today we're going to meet a women's group. So today we've visited another Boma <laughs> to, and this is a place where the, a group of young women meet probably twice a month and look at them, they're beautiful and look at their lovely colours and we've been talking to them and finding out all their stories. So her name is Somoina Tirina and the group name is Enchola. So the group uh, is normally a bidding group whereby they make Maasai ornaments for sale. So the beads they make are normally sold to tourists and also to uh, fellow Maasai people, especially uh, young ladies who are getting married. So the money that is generated from this uh, activity is normally sent at the household level to buy anything that they need, like food and any other family requirements and they also empower each other. For example, if there is one of them that has a child in school and is unable to pay school fees, they contribute money as a group and help and they also help each other uh, build houses. So how does Bonfree come in? How did you start working with Bonfree? How does Bonfree help you in as a group? Uh, so they say that uh, ever since we started the conservation group, uh, the education conservation groups in this area, uh, they have been able to learn the importance of wildlife because uh, for the longest time they coexisted with wildlife but they did not see the benefits that they were getting from wildlife. That, but we, through the education they understand that it's not only economical benefits that wildlife bring but even ecological and environmental. So they plant trees and everything else. So they have learned so much and now they coexist peacefully with wildlife knowing that there are more benefits than just tangible money that they can see. During the last uh, couple of years, especially the last two years, uh, drought has become very severe and therefore they have lost a lot of their wildlife, uh, livestock and they, therefore the family income has reduced drastically. Uh, they are not able to, to meet their basic needs. Uh, Human-wildlife conflict is very high, you know, especially on the wildlife part. The elephants especially, these are wildlife corridor, and the elephants are quite many in this area. Uh, the, the young children that or the, the people that are herding their animals uh, are going through a hard time. The elephants chase them. The elephants come inside the bombers and they destroy uh, trees and any other uh, uh, any other you know, vegetation around homes, at the borehole where the livestock take water, the elephants also chase the livestock away from the water uh, place. So they are saying that there is a lot of human wildlife challenges, but ever since we started the conservation education groups, they have been able to understand the elephants quite a bit, and they also understand how to, you know, stay safe especially when they encounter an elephant because we had taught them what to do in case of they encounter an elephant. So there are so many challenges, especially because of climate change, because of uh, lack of rainfall. So the, the piercing in the ear was done a long time ago as an identity of the Ilkisongo Maasai. So this one was like their identity so that you can say this is a Maasai person. So before they used to carry the like small modern uh, clutches or handbags, but right now they make it themselves. This one is used to put their phones, and some money, and some money. She doesn't have any money now, she could have shown us. So this one is for putting money and your phone. So she's saying that what they normally do is just beautification. So they realize that when you put, let's say, a white and then black, and then you put a red one, so separating colors makes the ornaments more beautiful. So it's just like uh, it's artwork. 
So why, uh, whilst we've been doing the interviews with the Maasai women here, I've been starting my painting. So come and have a look. So I've just started to sketch out some of the ladies seated on the ground. Quite tricky, they keep moving, but that's, that's fine. They're just living their lives. And you see those blobs in the sky? Those are going to be weaver bird nests. We are seeing a lot of red. Most people, nearly everyone has something red. What's the significance? So traditionally, the Maasai people loved the color red. And even if in the, in the past when they were not producing red, red sugars, they would buy like red paint and dip the sugar they buy themselves and make it red. So just, they, it says, they say that it matches their ornaments and also it signifies mm, them as a people. I do the background first and then start to build up the foreground and then add the detail. So tell us a bit about yourself. She says that she's a mother of seven and uh, I asked her whether the children are in school. She says yes, they're in school, but a lot of them are dropping out because of the drought situation. They cannot afford school fees. My painting's coming on, so have a look. I'm just working on the acacia trees at the top here, just putting in some thorns. And I've started to put jewellery on the ladies as well in my figures. But have a look at the real jewellery. It's fantastic. They make this themselves. It's all made from beadwork. And it's all made here in the Boma, the homestead, where they grew up and where they live. Tell us about your typical day, from when you wake up to the end of the day. Okay, so she wakes up at 5 a.m. in the morning, goes straight to the uh, kitchen, makes some tea, uh, and then they gives the breakfast to the children who are going to school. And then from there, she goes to the cow shed where the animals are. After finishing uh, that, they will let the herder take the livestock to the you know forest for feeding. They'll come back home and she will go fetch firewood. When com coming back from fetching firewood, they should start preparing the family lunch. So she's the last one to sleep in the family and the first one to wake up. Uh, what are the uh, wildlife do they encounter in this area? There is a lot of predation in this area, especially from lions and cheetahs and leopards. There are very many predators here and they are eating a lot of cows and a lot of goats. So when the girls get married, there's, there's a dowry that's paid to the parents and it's paid in terms of livestock. So most of the time you'd find a girl would be married off, especially in such a situation. And we had a girl um, right this time in January when the schools opened who her father lost all her cattle. So he married her off so that he can get some cattle to build up his stock. Why did you choose to get married? Did you want to get married? The village your school fees. Or oh, she had to get married because she did not have the school fees to continue uh, going in school or being in school. Lots of school fees. Lack of school fees. The school fee issue also affects the boy child. You find that if the girls are married off, sometimes for, for the boys also, they are also very disadvantaged when the parents don't have school fees. The boys are sent off to go and guard people's houses. They become what we call here in Kenya watchmen so that they can bring some income into the, into the family. So it's not just the girls who are affected by the lack of school fees. It's both genders. Yes, they don't, they don't bring in a dowry, but then now they become the source of income for the family. And these are very young people who are 18, se uh, sometimes 17, 19, people who should be in college so that they can be building their future. And all, they're, they're asking for so little. They're just asking to go to hairdressing school or to go to tailoring school or to go to welding school or to just be, be, to become a plumber. You know, they're not asking to be, go and do law or engineering. They're just asking for things that we take for granted. Just so, and for them, that small thing can really make a difference in their future. As you can see, the house behind me, that, that house is for somebody who has graduated from the traditional bombers that we saw, saw the other day, and now he's built for himself a modern house made of iron sheet. What would you have wanted to do after school if you hadn't gotten married? I would like to be a teacher. I would have liked to be a nurse. Yes. All three are providing bags of flour uh, and they provided breakfast to thank the women today. This isn't a normal meeting day, so they've come to especially for us for last chance to paint so we can all appreciate their culture. <laughs> Yeah.
Right, not helping. Oh. It's a big room, back to my room. <laughs> 